Welcome back to Upfront. The race for Milwaukee County Executive is rapidly turning into one of the hottest contests of the spring election. The challenger, State Senator Chris Larson, bested the incumbent Chris Abley by a few hundred votes in the February primary. The two face off again in the April 5th election, and we talked to Senator Larson last week on this program. Today, we have the Milwaukee County Executive, Chris Abley, who's running for re-election. Mr. County Executive, good to have you back on the Great program. Great to be here, Mike. So were you alarmed at all by the, the primary results? Why do you think April is going to be different? Uh, well, I don't know if I was surprised. I expected it to be competitive. Uh, I think most people watching uh, the national primaries today uh, would say that the electorate is in a very interesting place. Uh, and I've been in Wisconsin long enough to know uh, you can never uh, make a perfect prediction of any election. But regardless, it doesn't change the fact that uh, we're going to work as hard as we can to talk about what we've gotten done, uh, how we've done it, what we'd like to do going forward, and be as specific as possible. What's the point of distinction? What's the distinction you're going to try to make in the remaining weeks? Sure. Well, it, sort of the distinction I think most of your viewers make when they're hiring somebody for anything. It's all well and good for somebody to say, hey, here's what I'm going to do for you, but you're probably going to go ahead and check uh, uh, how, how effective they've been in getting it done. Uh, I feel pretty uh, good about the fact that five years ago I said I was going to reform the Behavioral Health Division. We have. Uh, I said uh, I was going to lower debt. We've lowered hundreds of millions off the debt, improved our credit rating. Uh, I've done what I've said I'm going to do, and I've changed the direction in a positive way of a lot of our departments. Uh, we have less debt. We are better resourced, have better staff serving more people, thousands more people. Uh, and we've never proposed a tax increase. You talk a lot about uh, uh, restoring sort of a fiscal sanity to county mm -hmm. government, uh, but your opponent talks about things like the living wage, which are very popular. Yeah. Um, does that hurt you in this election? You're talking numbers and stat sheets and spreadsheets, yeah. and he's talking about wages for people. Well, to be clear, uh, the only reason I talk about the numbers and the budget is because that's what allows us to do everything else. Living wages, uh, child support, transit, family care, aging, all of it has to get paid for. Uh, again, you know, your viewers know it's one thing. If you ask everybody, would you like four cars, they'd say yes. Uh, if you ask them, would you like four cars, if it meant you'd have to give that much up, uh, it cost-wise for everything else you pay for, they'd probably say, well, no, we can't do that. It's irresponsible. Every day, uh, I think about the fact that the decisions I'm making aren't about my money, they're about your money. The reason that this year we were able to give the single biggest raise to employees and not uh, uh, raise their uh, health insurance, give them a tuition reimbursement program, is precisely because for five years I've been responsibly managing your money. We couldn't have done that five years ago. Everybody likes the idea of a living wage, me too. Uh, and Do you like the idea of a living wage? Because oh, when the, the county board voted sure. on this a couple of years ago, you were not in favor of it. What I wasn't in favor of is the $28 million from Family Care that our elected comptroller said it was going to cost. Uh, I'm sure most of the proponents of uh, living wage would agree that we also care about the frail and elderly, which is exactly who is served by Family Care. The thing about being in this position, uh, as uh, you know, anybody who's managed a budget knows, is you can't just commit to spending without being clear that you're going to be able uh, to afford what you're spending on. So so uh, if we can do, uh, I would love a living wage that could be done in a way that doesn't cut the services that we're providing elsewhere, it doesn't increase the cost to citizens. There's nobody who's against the idea of people getting the best wage they can, and I don't think there's anybody who's against maintaining service levels, but I'll bet everybody is for, at least at the end of the day when you're managing your own budget, you got to do what works. And so the idea is rather than just say, hey, do this, I don't care what it costs, I don't care what services get cut, uh, if we really care about a living wage or anything that supports people, let's search for a way to do it that's sustainable. That's why I've supported uh, the minimum wage at, at the federal level. That's why I liked uh, Governor O'Malley's model when he was in Maryland. Uh, they, when they committed to the uh, minimum wage, uh, the 1010, they had it done over a series of years, but in a way that was sustainable, that allowed them to do it without having to cut other services. And not only is it effective, but it's an easier, it's easier then to make the argument to use it elsewhere. Final question. Uh, you're now running an ad. Your campaign is running an ad. You ran a, a series of ads uh, before the primary. They were all very positive ads talking about what you see yeah, as your yeah. accomplishments. This ad is more of a, a negative ad critiquing Chris Larson's record. And and you try and tie him to Governor Walker. You suggest that his votes on some banking matters, his acceptance of some PAC money from a uh, large bank, uh, somehow makes him 
Walker-like. Um, is that a tough sell to say that Chris Larson is tied to Governor Walker? Well, the votes he took against his party are a matter of public records. So are the donations he took. Uh, and those are all things that Governor Walker, bills that Governor Walker signed. And if he sees them as negative, well, the time to think about that was probably when he was taking the votes. When we're in office, all of us in elected office, we're not just accountable for the things we want to talk about. We're accountable for all of our decisions. I've spent five years saying and meaning, hold me accountable. But not just for what I say I'm going to do, hold me accountable for what I do. Uh, and I think people should ask uh, themselves of any candidate, has this person proven that they can manage? Uh, have, has this person proven that when they say they're one thing, they are consistently that the thing they say they are? Uh, and again, you know, you can ask Senator Larson why he took those votes, but you know, they are votes that he knew the governor was going to sign. Milwaukee County Executive Chris Abley, who's running for re-election on April 5th. Thanks for your time today. We appreciate Great it. Great to be here, Mike. The county executive and his challenger, State Senator Chris Larson, will join me Wednesday, March 9th, for a conversation with the candidates at Marquette University Law School. It'll air live right here on WISN 12 and be live streamed on WISN.com starting at 7 p.m. Our conversation with the candidate series continues then with a live mayoral debate on Friday night, March 11th. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett and his challenger, Alderman Bob Donovan. And then on Tuesday, March 15th, the candidates for Wisconsin Supreme Court join me at the law school for their debate. That will be seen statewide at 7 p.m. on WISN 12 and on this upfront station. Coming up next, a state Senate candidate answers claims of double dipping. And for political news throughout the week, be sure to follow me at Mike Goucher on Twitter.